Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of our Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This is Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast, where today we're talking Smoky Mountain Wrestling, episode 145 from November 5th, 1994. And we really are just a year from the close of this promotion, a year and a couple of weeks, but I don't want to be Debbie Downer today. Doc, how are you this morning? Or should I throw it to Harper first, since Mrs. Doc is still walking around and she can hear what you're oh, saying? Oh, shit. I'm fine. I, I don't care what you do, pal. I'm fine. Whatever way we do this, I am good because we have a good show to review today. He's full of shit. He's just no, complaining. <laughs> no, man. This is a this is a quality forty five minutes of wrestling the way I like it. I'm not disputing that. I'm disputing the fact that you've you you've got a situation going on with uh, why are you trying, but see here's here's the here's your problem man that's out there i'm in here for right now this is my refuge this is my my just like our listeners listen to this to help them get through tough times and we know that we hear the army tell us that you know hey man your show puts a smile on my face when shit's going bad sometimes recording the show is the same way so why are you trying to you know piss in my cheerios fool this is chill like indian reservation what? They can't fuck with you here? <laughs> right, I can go out into the world and kill somebody and then drive back on the reservation. If you're an Indian, right? Right. That's how it works. Okay, 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 okay. We, we, can, <laughs> we can stop now. Um, he just said all that, but he was just complaining literally five seconds ago before the red light came on. So whatever. Hopper, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, man. Does the intro to this ever change? Yes. yes 1995, it gets infinitely worse. Yeah. Oh. Believe me. You like you want this. You don't want this going away. Because what comes oh. after it is just he'll really, really just God all how awful is it, Doc? You know, we throw around the word mud show. <laughs> <laughs> But it's that bad. I hate it. I hate the intro when they change it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I hate to sound like Bix there. Yeah. It's bad. I don't I don't like it at all. It's just it's just it's just dumb. I I I know Corny had his reasoning behind it, but ah, man, I, I I like the old one. This this one, well, I say old one. They're all both old at this point, but the original that they used was so much better. Ugh. I'm Ugh, disappointed. Yeah, you should be. Just did. He just did a broad logic. Ugh. <laughs> he did. Ugh. All we need now is I can't even, and we'll be Ugh. ready to roll. FML. Ugh. What happened? Ugh. What happened? What happened? Don't <laughs> respond. What happened? What happened? Don't just don't respond to anything. Bruh. That's how they this do it. It's like the universal call sign for I need attention. These days. <laughs> these broads go on social media and go, I can't even ug uh, worst day ever. And then 50 fucking responses after. Dude, it's like their own like support group. That gets no support. It's just <laughs> Let me talk about it. And then eventually they yeah, it, you know what but you know why that is, right? Why? I don't. What? What you gonna tell me? Well, you know that you know the answer here. So when I say this, you're gonna say, Yeah. It's not that somebody goes and does that. Because like if Harper came to us and said, Man, I'm having a rough patch, he's never done that before. So he'd be like, Shit, man, he must be going through some shit. But the people who are out on social media going, oh, worst day ever, they do that every fucking day. That's true, huh? Well, give them some the, credit. Maybe not every day, the, but a few times a month. They're the twat that call, cried wolf. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but he's got a, there's a lot of truth to that. But all right. Oh, there, uh, there, goes, there goes Karen again with her fucking problems. 
Man. You know, maybe if she spent more time dealing with these problems instead of posting about them on social media, she'd be get back to the live, love, and laugh. That's right. And, you know, we've we've been talking for a minute here, and I feel like we've been rude. Um, Harper, how are you doing this morning? I, 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 I asked him how he was doing. I'm oh. doing great, man. You watching some Starcade? Yeah, it was. <clears throat> All right. Not well, that Starcade. Let's get into Smoky Mountain Wrestling. How's that sound, Doc? Sorry. Man, I, this is a good one, man. I like really this one. Is. I, I don't want to give away the checks at the beginning, but this was this was fun. Yeah, it's a good episode. So again, there is Smoky a Mountain. there is a historic classic moment in the promotion's history represented in this episode. It yeah. sure is. Um, <laughs> this episode 145 of Smoky Mountain, again, November 5th, 1994. Uh, shout out to Disrespectfully Classy, Marky e. Blassy, Kyle Riley, and Mike Childry our, Childry, our big time Patreon contributors. Now, we are in the same venue. We're in Morgantown, North Carolina, so we're still here in the same damn love, place. 400. People. Yeah, how, uh, uh, once again, did the did Horner's ring truck break down here? Or It feels like... <laughs> You know, what's the old saying? We spent a month one night in Kansas. No. Yeah. I told, I, we've said this before. I told you what Corny told us, and then Les Thatcher even said it. They would. They got to this point, and, man, they were doing it basically. They started early Smoky Mountain pretty much three TV tapings in one place, and by this point, man, they're four, and they're actually – technically, they get five out of this one, but we'll Fuck. talk about that next week. Um, technically, they get five out of it, but it's not really a full five. Right. Because, because of the way they do it next week. But – yeah, man, they were they were just they would just do it, and I, I gotta say, man, it had to be hard for those people in the audience sitting through four taping. But it is, it sitting is what it is. That, I mean, what else that, are you gonna go fucking do? That's a great point. Hey, wow. Fuck, I mean, seriously, it's not, it's not you, like can step out, you can step out in the parking lot and rip off a line of crank and then come back in. Yeah, they're gonna be like, oh no, I'm missing uh, Lorenzo Lamas on on fucking Renegade. Jesus you know? Christ. Okay. They ain't going anywhere. They got air um, conditioning in that fucking building. They ain't fucking leaving. <laughs> okay. All right. They got, so, <laughs> go ahead. They got fucking what? indoor plumbing. They got indoor plumbing and fucking air conditioning <laughs> in that building. They ain't going anywhere. Shit, if something bad happens to them, there's probably medical attention that can get to them. Right. Right. <laughs> so you're saying this is heaven or something? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Uh, at the very opening, I am sharing my screen with you all. The very opening, less. Oh no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. No, I'm not going back. Go ahead and see. No, no. Go back. Say. Look at that kid in the. I mean, the first thing you see is that kid in the Confederate flag shirt. Yeah, I, I know. Good for her. Les Thatcher and Jim Ross break down the action. They say we'll see the rest of what happened last week after they went off air. Brian Anderson will face Sean Casey in the Beat the Champ TV title match, and Cornette is on JR's confrontation segment. And that was pretty much it from the opening. We go then to the first match. It's Brian Logan and the Inferno versus Lance Storm and primetime Brian Lee. Uh, Brian Lee and Lance Storm win the match when Storm hits Inferno with a flying crossbody. And that's all I had from that. Doc, did you have anything else? I had one note. I liked it on commentary. Jr. was talking about Vader and Cactus getting it on, and just I like the fact that they're bringing up stuff from around the wrestling world and just touching on it. Aubrey, do you have anything? I don't like how Lance wears those 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 white shoes because he wears all black, and it's like he's wearing white fucking Reeboks. It, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't watch. Look good. Got like basketball see what, shoes on. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But those are wrestling boots. He's just got the yeah. But they should be they should be all the same color or something. It it doesn't it doesn't look right. Maybe you should tweet Lance Storm and tell him that. See what he says. Say hey, Lance, straighten up. <laughs> it's the it's the he's little actually, things. He's at, mm-hmm. his his wrestling takes on Twitter are, are are pretty entertaining. I must say, he's got a snarkiness to him. It's. It's entertaining. So, yeah, make sure you get get in touch with him. I tried to tweet him to, to see if I could get him on the show. He never responded. So Yeah, he's yeah, like smoky him. mountain. Right. What? Fuck okay. him. He's yeah. probably got better things to do with his time. No, he doesn't. Okay. Well, you can hate on Lance Storm. I actually like Lance, but whatever. I do um, too, but I, I mean, I'm not going to stand for this abuse. All right. 
We um after Lance pins the Inferno in that tag match, uh, we get a replay of last week when Boo Bradley and Cactus Jack, um, after getting directions from Tammy, uh, Cactus tried to convince Boo to walk away from Candido and Tammy, and yeah, we had the attack happen, all that good stuff. I don't have anything. It's a recap, Doc. Do you? Uh, n uh, no, not on a recap. Yeah, I figured that Harper. So we'll keep going. Let me go now. Get to the timestamp. It Jeez. is uh. Because this is a fun little moment. So we're, we're at, just set it up. We're at ringside. This is after the replay and the attack and Boo and Cactus going at it. We got primetime Brian Lee, Les Thatcher, and Cactus at ringside. And Les is interviewing the two of them. Uh, let's play it and see what happens. Uh, Boo is going to come out, and uh, we'll go from there. It has been made between you and Lance Storm. That's right, Les. I told you last week that Lance and I would get together, and we'd do Cactus a favor, and we did. We flipped a coin, and I lost, so I get to be Cactus' partner. <laughs> How do you feel about that now, Jack? I feel pretty good, because six years ago, this young man stepped in a wrestling ring with me for his very first match. Young, innocent, his future right out in front of him. To look at him now! Dirty, mean, with the sins of the world painted across his face does my heart proud because as much as I hate to go back into the 70s and quote KC and the Sunshine Band, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it because we're going to have to get down bye -bye. and get real dirty at Thanksgiving Thunder. We got Boo Bradley, who I've got to knock some sense into and Chris Candido, who you might as well slap the taste out of, and together I guarantee you, we're gonna accomplish both goals at Thanksgiving Thunder. So this is gonna be your big Thanksgiving feast, right, Brian? That's exactly right. Cactus Jack and Primetime together once again. All right, Primetime, oh. Brian Lee and Cactus Jack. Well, we'll wait. be right back no, after this. We're gonna keep it right here. There's uh, Boo Bradley out here. Let's keep it right wait here if we can. What's he doing out here by himself? And where's Miss Tammy? Cactus, Cactus, uh, I just, I just, I just wanted to say sorry for for doing that to you last week because I knew you just wanted to be my friend. And I only have one other friend besides Chris and Tammy. Who's that? Boots. 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 Who's Boots? Who is Boots? That's a good question. Uh, Miss Tammy's now. Let's we'll see uh, what exactly. What? Boots! What did I tell you would happen to Boots if you didn't listen to me? What did I tell you would happen to your precious little kitty, huh? This is Boots. What did I tell you? That's, what did I tell you? That's Boots. <laughs> that's Boots. That's one thing. One thing's for sure. I can see that Boot Bradley's not the only man whose fascination with a pussy has led him astray. <laughs> Of Jack's check. We'll be back. Okay. Um, <laughs> Play that last part again. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Let's, this is from Tammy. Huh? This is Boots. What did I tell you? <laughs> what did I tell you? That's Boots. That's Boots. That's one thing. One thing's for sure. I can see that Boo Bradley's not the only man whose fascination with a pussy has led him astray. Oh, the comments of Cactus Jack. We'll be back. Oh, okay, Doc. You, you've you've uh, you've been wanting to get at this uh, segment. What do you got? Okay, so I feel like he, he came up with that, and like I got to get this in fast before I crack myself up because he's kind of rushing that at the end and i don't think les knew what to say when he was done do you agree oh he was dumbfounded i mean i don't i'm sure he didn't and i don't say dumbfounded, Les is a stone cold but... professional so he's like the words of cactus jack but <laughs> yeah but... He, he yeah no i don't mean dumbfounded I, I agree he he kind of was like wow uh i you know did this he is... just, at first it's kind of did he just say what i thought he said yeah. which is why i said yeah. play it again yeah yeah yeah, Les, Les didn't know that was coming, which, again, it's, that's a whole other topic, the, the the day and age of unscripted promos. Sure. Um, okay, go, what else you got, Doc? This was great. Yeah, so, man, they're rolling out a kitty cat. 
that is just threatening a, a small pet is some heelish behavior. No. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a cat yeah. person. I'm not a cat person. But come on, man, you can't you can't throw the kitty in the in down the well, you know. Well, yeah, it's heelish, but I mean. At least it's not a monkey committing suicide during a pay per view. That's nice. Or a bear pissing. Why? Why can we only have one? Why can't we have both? Um, I don't know. I just, dude, that is a a line of lines right there. I mean, fascination with pussy has led him astray. I also, it's easy to focus on that line because it's the cheap pop. But it's a great pop. But Cactus is crazy. He's like Charles Manson. But he's out there quoting Casey and the Sunshine Band too, which is hilarious. This is just a really great promo. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that I get it. We're going to say it. You couldn't do this today on Raw. I don't really care. This is a great territory wrestling angle. I actually think you could do that today because a, a commonly known name for a, a kitty cat or a, a baby cat is a is a pussy cat. So I actually think you could you could fool around and get a, get away with that. But they wouldn't do it because it's just fucking retar- You know, just dumb shit that they. I don't know. I don't even have the words. It's just dumb what they do every single week. But um, this is this was this was really in in Cactus's words. This is really fascinating when he said this. <laughs> He's not the only man whose uh, fascination with a pussy has led him astray. Uh, this was this was really good. Harper, Harper, you haven't said much yet. What do you have? Dude, whose who's, who's cat is that? Bro. Boots the cat. And Boots, and Pop, boots. the name popped me too. Cause, you know, boots, right? <laughs> Pops and the, Boots. Getting the boots put to you. Right, that's what I thought. Because uh, you think about getting the boots put to you, and boy, I, that's one thing pussy will do. It will get the boots That's nice. Am I lying? No. <laughs> and I felt a little sad. I felt a little sad because I had a dog named Boots. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were okay. I thought you were going to say you felt a little sad because they had an animal out there. And I'm going, I can never feel sad again for an animal after watching a monkey, you know, commit suicide. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. I was going to save it for the match, but why not? Yeah. All right, so you got to, the British Bulldogs brought their little bulldog out, right? And we used to talk about that. Like, you know, man, Harper, you're a manager. You want to be taking care of a dog during a match? You know, there's... They're not in on the work, right? It's a little hard to smarten them up. <laughs> right, right. You can you can break kayfabe with a with an animal, but you know. And so then we've seen bears, which is just never a good. I don't care how you slice the bear; it's not a good idea. The monkey proof did not be a good idea either. And so there's all these different animal possibilities. But Harper, have you ever held a cat that doesn't want to be held? Bro, I was thinking the same. Th- I'm sitting there watching that match, thinking, "When's the cat g- going to jump out of her arms?" Yeah. When's it going to jump out? Because he just a cat. E- even if you have a cat like that, that, that doesn't care if you pick him up. He doesn't want to sit there. There's a ha- there's a there's a minutes. timer go- when you pick up a cat. There's a ha- there's a timer that starts, and every cat right. timer is different, but it's not the length of a match. Right. And I was waiting for that cat to kind of like put me down, put me down. I got a leash on me. What the fuck is this thing? Oh, fuck. (laughs) Fuck. There's fucking people screaming. Yeah. Fuck. You ever seen a cat get get spooked because people are around? Come on, man. (laughs) Like that old video. I'm sure y'all seen it. That old. It's. It's. It's probably about as old as this. It's the it's it's with the guys from like the SPCA, and he has a cat on a leash, and he's on like the local news, and he's like, "Okay, we got Fluffy here. He's uh, two years old. He's up for adoption." And the cat goes crazy. Something spooks it, and it just claws its fucking leg and his fucking nuts. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah, I'm not a, you yeah. <laughs> 
I was trying to see if this happen. I was trying to see if this cat had a leash on it, but it it doesn't look like it does, which might even be worse than. I think that's why she's holding it uh, like she is. Right, because it doesn't. Neck. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, Doc, you bring up a very good point. That's a bad situation waiting to happen right there with that goddamn cat. Because it's, a dog don't give a fuck. Right. You know? <laughs> right. But the cat... A dog is like a dude. Like, let right. me just, let me just right, put I, up with this bullshit I, I look, for a little while. Yeah, if I go out there, they're going to fucking scratch my tummy and give me a, one of Harper's <laughs> dog biscuits. They're going to give me a reach around, maybe crank me off yeah. one. I'll be all right when I get to the back. That's what a dog's thinking. I could see the. It may be small, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. A right, cat, right. <laughs> a cat sees the next millisecond in front of its face and what it wants. <laughs> it's like a broad. Well, I, I was gonna let you say that. Hey, bro, I'll say it. I ain't no shame. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just thinking about Tammy's arms because she likes to go bare armed out there in her sweet, yeah. sweet chest, and that cat starts getting spooked by these hillbillies. And now she's having to crank down on a cat that has does forget it, man. So there's a couple of things that I think could be happening here, and I wanted to discuss these with you. One is the cat declawed. That's wow. true. Maybe, but even then, that don't stop them back fucking legs from that's, your ass a new uh, asshole. That's, that's 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 part of it. And so we've also discussed. The slipshod treatment of animals that get brought into the wrestling arena, right? Right. Whether it's the bulldogs or a monkey, a, a monkey or a snake that, you know, the monkey didn't make it. So what do you think in order to pull this off that Boots was drugged with tranquilizers? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Because you got actually... you got to do something, man. Right. Okay. So that actually might be a good idea. After within the most within the last few weeks, we watched the monkey commit suicide on a paper. Right. Right. Um, and I'm I would a, say, and look, and look, I've given my dogs tr- sedatives a couple of times for long trips, just to ease the, you know, and it's very controlled and prescribed. Hey, that shit works. And it works. And it's very, it was a low dosage, very controlled, blah, blah, blah. Backstage at the Ding Dong High School for the Smoky Mountain Wrestling, they just <laughs> shoved a bunch of... They shoved some, some, they had somebody's... <laughs> Boo, Bradley, Boo Bradley Soma inside some Meow Mix and threw it down that cast Boots' poor throat. <laughs> Bo- Boots might think he's on Mars right now. <laughs> They probably went digging through their fucking fanny pack and they got. I got some Xanax. Who's holding? Who's holding, guys? Imagine if Books got a hold of a Soma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be real, man. It's a wrestling locker room. That's a street pharmacy back there, dude. <laughs> right. And, 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 and. I believe you that it's a street pharmacy. But oh, then, man. The way to would the way to then solve the problem in the locker room be to just give the cat one of yours? <laughs> Could you see? Harper knows, man. Wrestlers aren't always the most educated personnel on earth. <laughs> you could see one of them like somebody's back there going, "Man, we got to make sure this cat doesn't go crazy, man, because cats can go nuts sometimes, you know." And and one of the wrestlers is like primetime Brian Lee, and I'm not trying I got to insult it. him. I got they it. Go, <laughs> well, if you need something, uh, uh, how about we just give it a half a soma? <laughs> he, he just gave this like you know three pound it, kitten a freaking chop, half a it soma. Chops it, in, chops it in half and gives the kitty a half, and right. it takes the other half for himself. Don't don't mind if I do. <laughs> they do a little cheers with the soma back there. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! I actually didn't think this segment would go the way it would with the cat, but this is good shit. <laughs> well, it's just so. It's an interesting angle because it it is the it's the humanization of Boo here that he's a borderline special person who's under control, but he's crazy, so he's not sympathetic. Now he's sympathetic. 
Yeah. And it gives Cactus even more reason to want to save somebody because there's at least one redeeming quality about this guy is that he cares about animals. And who doesn't care about animals? Right. I mean, yeah. even Tony Soprano does. Right. Right. A beautiful exactly. horse. So one of the things that I always say is if you don't – look, I don't like cats. I'm fine with cats. I'm just allergic to cats. I don't like cats. So I'm a dog person. But I like dogs a lot. I like animals. If you meet somebody in your travels that's like, I just don't like animals, It's you always look at them sideways. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? I mean, it's all right if you don't like animals. I got a problem if you just like to harm animals just for the fun of it. Well, that's another like, thing. I mean, that's nuts. Man, well, bro, I just seen some people do some cruel shit to animals as a kid, and I was like, why, what is wrong with you? Like, why? You're just a pussy. You, you harm something that can't fight back. Just fuck just you know just what's wrong with you man that's my problem with like because that's just like bully that's a, like a bully behavior anyway anyway that was just my thought but I, i'm with you doc i hear you like back in the day man you know you didn't have stray dogs in your neighborhood and there's kids like want to abuse the damn stray dog like bro what that dog did to you man that dog's just trying to eat out a living bust him yeah. out if he can find him a, a female running around and he's trying to eat some food and you want to go Take a slingshot and and with a to ball pop and ass. on it and pop him in. Well, there's head. there's a different story about that. I mean, you really want me, you, re, you really want me to help you out here? Why? Right. Go ahead. So rich kids are pricks too, but for different reasons. So don't get this twisted the wrong way, because rich kids can be the worst. It's the, a power thing. It's a power thing. When you're poor, I I, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to cut a promo here. When you're poor, you have less power over everything in your life. It's a way to to exert power, and I think some of it is subconscious. Another theory out there is it's why poor people have more kids. It's the only it's something they can actually control. Then they can't do anything about it, but it you know, six, <laughs> six inches in front of your face kind of thing. Yeah, and it was feeling toasty. It was it was all warm in there, toasty. So I just went ahead and shot a rope in it. <laughs> Let, let's keep going we're getting too philosophical here. um we can't get no damn abortions now oh uh, jesus christ yeah. oh, wow. they're not going that route they still of... can it's just not safer uh, 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 no, no they can but... you, you, you just gotta do it like fucking fedex uh, like you gotta oh, get the fucking geez. the fucking overnight uh, you know uh, all right all right it's all like right. it's like when you're buying shit on on fucking online and it says you know you want to spend an extra ten bucks to get in fucking two days? Yes. I just figured that you just got a funnel and some bleach and took care oh, of it. Jesus. Jesus. You fucking Jay not. JR throws <laughs> us to the gangsters cutting a uh. promo behind a shack and next to a bus. Uh, but first he makes a pussy joke. Let's listen to JR. One thing's for sure, I guess we know who Boots is now, huh, Les? Wow. <laughs> and do we ever. I've seen a lot, folks, in my career. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. And quite like last week's uh, brawl between the Rock and Roll Express and the gangsters. Remember, remember, in this hour, we'll show you all that transpired after we went off the air when our cameras did catch up with the gangsters earlier this week. That's right. We've got the gangsters and the posse in the street. They have these comments. Thanksgiving Thunder. Rock and Roll Express, I'll kind of match. Ghetto Street Fight, we get to go back to the projects and find stuff, bring stuff, and beat your brains out. You actually had the nerve to sign a match with us? Now we gonna show you what it's like. We gonna have tines, car batteries, pumps, anything that we can get we gonna beat you down just think getting hit upside the head with a car battery just think getting hit upside the head with a brick a stick or anything a little fan a garbage can rick and robert your days are numbered rock and roll is present thanksgiving thunder get ready jack because you're going down you're gonna get stomped in the ground by the hands of the gangsters d -Lo, bring it all in here baby bring it all in go down in the woods and find all kinds of stuff rick and robert get ready we done took your bells now we're gonna take your pride we're gonna show you what it's like to deal with the gangsters we getting ready to put an end the rock and roll express d-lo find everything you can find rock and roll your through is over with the gangsters are in the house and guess what now you in our house street fight thanksgiving thunder get ready rock and roll is over 
Logan Mountain Wrestling will not be responsible for any injuries inflicted or suffered in the ghetto street fight at Thanksgiving Thunder. I just wanted to mention that. Doc, anything from the gangsters promo here where they are behind a shack again and next to a bus and whatnot. I love, as always, and this is whether it's Candido throwing the and Bobby Blaze wrestling in a um wrestling at the lake. I forgot. Well, it wasn't really a lake; it was a pond. Yeah, right. If you want to call it a pond, um. Or anything that's off-site, and there's some coming up in 95 that are fantastic. So I really like this. I, th- I don't know what, what New Jack wanted D-Lo to go find out in the forest to get some uh, some some more stuff. but And it's solid, but I need some more Kill Whitey action. That's nice, Doc. I, dude, thought- that's the stuff that pops us the most. Well, I, I agree. Like when he talked about, you know, grabbing Ricky by his pink little neck. Uh, there's there's some truth to that. Uh, Hopper, do you have anything from the gangsters right there? I, I personally think it's just them setting up to, I mean, I, they, they look, they, this has been going on for a little while now. I mean, I don't know how much more he can say, but, you know, what did you have, Hopper? It's it's crazy to think that uh, D'Lo Brown is an accountant that graduated from the University of fucking Maryland watching that video. <laughs> That's right. Isn't it? Stop yeah. judging books by their covers. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should all do is you see a black man walking around in a in a bandana and maybe you just you, you don't just jump to conclusions that he's out there hanging and banging. Look, look man. at his cat. Look at his cat. That cat's freaking uh, out right there. No way. Hold on. That cat's not go happy. Back. That cat is not happy, and that cat is older. That's an older cat. That's not a kitty cat. So we're we're moving to the next segment here, real quick, because Chad Austin's about to take on Boo Bradley in a in a match, and uh, Boo Boo's gonna win this match quickly. But if you're watching on Patreon at tinyurl.com slash Patreon btt, um, become a patron. Trust me, you get. I, I Come on, what are you waiting plus on? Episodes. What, I mean, seriously, like, what are you waiting on? Become a patron. There's 200 plus Patreon episodes up at this point. Um, lots of great stuff, non wrestling stuff, uh, but still fun stuff nonetheless. Man, did you hear? Did you see that uh, Fritz wants to come on and do hair metal? He thinks he can out hair metal me and Harper. Yeah, right. I, I'm well, you want to get it, What do you want to get into, Fritz? You want to get into Babylon AD or maybe some Tora Tora or some uh, what was it X Y Z? We can go there, man. We can go yeah. the whole way. I just didn't do it because, you know, the right. people don't know who that is. But we can go the whole way if you want. <laughs> yeah. Fritz, Fritz, so Fritz Fritz fucking Monkey. Keith Diamond shit. Fritz oh, Von no. Monkey needs attention, and you just gave it to him. Merry well, Christmas, Fritz. I, in, I, in I, like, I need attention, too, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's 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 keep going. Again, so Austin, Chad Austin and Boo Bradley are about to wrestle. And Tammy has this cat. This well, out mm. with her. Watch the she, cat. Watch the cat, y'all, when he, she's walking out. This cat is starting to freak out, and she's got two hands on it. But this cat this cat is freaking out. L- look at him. Look, he, he's yeah. trying to get away. I mean, she's really got to keep a grip on him because he's like, what the hell is going on? So anyway, uh, I, I I don't I don't envy her position at this point. That uh, cat is sitting there to... thinking, man, I was happy when somebody snatched me out of the pound, but this is some bullshit. I know, huh? <laughs> uh, Fuck any... this rescue shit. <laughs> and it does have a leash on it. I'm looking at it now. This time it's got a leash. That didn't that, save that monkey's ass. No. Dude, well, well, imagine if that cat kind of... <laughs> imagine pulling back on that fucking leash. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like Dude. you would a dog. <laughs> that cat would die. It <laughs> is a freak. Oh, man. All right. Uh, Boo wins. Any other thoughts on the match, though, Doc? Uh, let me Pretty see quick. here. I was too busy dealing with. Um, I like to see Sunny holding her kitty. Yeah, and, uh, playing with, with with her pussy. Yes. How old are we? Come on. Um, and I thought that the crowd when when Boo went for the splash, the crowd kind of <gasps> like he's really going to jump from there. <laughs> so we talked about last week or the week before. That's a big bastard to be coming down like that. Oh yeah, I say that about Boo and Balls. He was. Pretty damn agile for a big dude, but yeah. 
Sure was. All right, let's go to Boo. Uh, Harper, do you have anything for match, or can we go to? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Right, let's let's go to Boo and Tammy right here. Well, Miss Vince, as we heard earlier in the broadcast, it will be primetime Brian Lee, a man you fired on occasion, and Cactus Jack at Thanksgiving Thunder against this man and Chris Candido, who will be back here on TV next week. That's right, Chris Candido will be back next week on TV, and then he'll help me control this idiot, this fool, this bumbling, stupid goof. <laughs> But until then, boo, boo Bradley, you stupid idiot. If you want your little kitty to be healthy and to be happy, you better do exactly what I say because you know what can happen to little kitties like this when somebody's stronger than them. Your precious little kitty. So what are you going to do? Are you going to listen to me? Yeah, if you want your kitty, if you want this cat, you better do everything I say. Do you understand me? I'm at it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what can you what can you say to that? Here's more on Thanksgiving Thunder. <laughs> Man, you want some real time real time action? What? It appears that in topical to the discussion, you know Grumpy Cat, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Grumpy Grumpy Cat died. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know that. Yeah, with that meme. It's... Yeah, man, I yeah. hope that little that little African boy that looking skeptical at that lady doesn't die because that kid is awesome. Oh fuck, that's my favorite meme in the world. Is like he's just come on, bro. That, that meme's been shared way too many times. It's like, I don't care. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to this. Um, thoughts on. It's like my Tammy. seed. You can never spread it too much. Oh, okay. Thoughts on Hopper, thoughts on Tammy and uh keeping Boo's cat. The cat seemed to calm down. Maybe, Maybe the, the soma second soma. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because it's like and, and, and may- she's petting them. Well, maybe the discussion was we got this all out of order. She went out there with the cat and then came to the back and was like, Man, I was struggling with that cat. And then somebody problem solved and said, Oh, I got an idea. And then what we said. Hold on, girl. Bring that cat over here. Y'all, uh, we being funny, but man. No, I, 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 that I can, might happen. That might right. have happened. I guarantee you they had a can of Friskies in there. And they opened up that can of Friskies. <laughs> and they put the fucking pill in there. He'll Just crush it. up the Soma, man. Yeah. He'll <laughs> eat it. That's actually how you give cats medicine, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> You put it in the frisky and they, they <laughs> gobble that shit up because they're not Fox, paying you just attention. That pill in a, the, you just wrap it in a piece of cheese and get your yep. hand out of the way. <laughs> Pretty much. But a cat mm-hmm. will spit that out if you try to give it to them like that. But yeah. Cat's like... <laughs> yeah. All right. So JR like, was. The girl that doesn't want you to shoot in her mouth, but then you oh, do. And she's. Okay. Running That's around nice. Bruh. She's like, it tastes like bleach. You'd like to I'm explain? I don't no, know. I'm, 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 JR keeps the show moving, <laughs> and he throws it to the Thanksgiving Thunder, Thunder, <laughs> Thunder tour dates and locations. And we got four dates this year. So Thursday. Hey, hey Harper, is that November twenty seventh date the same place y'all are going to with Walk? Went to with Wildcat? No, we're they're, in, they're not uh, going to Cobb County. No, that's a, going to a little. Shithole. <laughs> Shit. That's nice. Fine. It's the landmark arena. Yeah, ain't nothing landmark about that bitch. Oh what? Yeah, but, you, but dude, you have to. <laughs> I'm be messing so, with him. I'm messing you, with him. Why can't you be more supportive of his dreams? Yeah, I am. I plug it all the time here. By this time this airs, that would have already happened. Just so, yeah. Whatever. While we're talking yeah. about Wildcat, June twenty second, Wildcat Sports. Um. X-rated in New Orleans. I think this will air a week or so before that. So there you go. There's another Wildcat plug. Uh, no, seriously. So we got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We got Knoxville, Paintsville, Johnson City, and then we're going to Marietta, Georgia this year for the Sunday show. Uh, that's Thanksgiving Thunder. We'll talk more about Thanksgiving Thunder as the the weeks go. I mean, we're building up to it at this point. This is early November, so we're just a few weeks away right now. Uh, they run down the entire card for Thanksgiving Thunder. Uh, lots of stuff going down. Um, you know, we got the gangsters. We got you know, Ron Wright and Dirty White Boy versus Jim Cornette, Bruiser Bedlam. Uh, a bunch of different matches. We got Tracy Smothers in that. I guess they call it the 
I'm going to call it lights out. No time limit match against Brian Anderson. Brew Bad, Boo Bradley and Chris Candido uh, versus Cactus and Primetime Brian Lee. We got the Ghetto Street Fight. All that good stuff. So we'll talk more about it. They're going to build towards it over the co- next couple weeks. Uh, Doc, any thoughts as uh, you know, we keep moving or can we keep going? You can keep going, my friend. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next segment is a uh, JR's confrontation segment with Jim Cornette, Bruce Bedlam, um, Ron West, and Bob Armstrong. Uh, I had a question for both of you. Uh, we'll vote on it. Are we playing this one here? Oh, the confrontation thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's nothing that we haven't seen it. before. Yeah. I can talk through it, Doc. I'll let you. You tell me if you want to play it or not. But I can say this: Cornette has a legit gripe here. He's he doesn't want to be. My first note was: again. I was like, Corny has a point about that bullet shit. Yeah, he wants Cornette wants reassurance that when Bob Armstrong loses, that Bob Armstrong will will have to lose. And Ron West, who's the guy to the next to Bob Armstrong and Jr., confirms that all the stipulations need to be met. And I think that was an important point because. You know, Doc said it either last week or the week before. One of the things that Smoky Mountain didn't seem to do every single time was uh, meet the stipulation. Uh, Doc, you want to add anything no. to what I just said? Well, and my point is, why do we have to sit here and point out that we're actually going to follow the rules that we set forth? Popper, what did you, anything else? No, it's the same it's thing. True. It's just I did know. notice that, that he calls, um, he, um, Corny called him the best, the, the, the best pile. Oh, from uh, going, yeah, Goober and all that. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so we'll keep. Well, you no, know, I mean that. That's always an opportunity for someone to make an appearance. Who? He's, he's trying to give. He's trying to give you a hint. <laughs> what? Never mind. He's trying what, to tell what? you to get the do the Gomer Powell. Mike, voice I've done something. all I can do here. Yeah. Well, no, you're telling word. him to do Gomer Powell, but you're not telling him what you want him to do Gomer Powell right. to. Just right. Do something, man. The people, these people don't care what do. you do. They just want to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep going. <laughs> Sean Casey and Brian Anderson for the Beat the Champ TV title. Brian Anderson wins with the arm bar when Casey gives up and submits. I don't have anything else from it. Doc, do you? Um, Doc, if you got something from this match, come on. Um. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I thought Jr. was doing commentary about the Cincinnati Bengals in there, man. He was doing some football breakdowns. Yeah, this, this is pretty boring, though. So Harper, I'm assuming you have nothing as well. And and the other thing is, think about like it's boring for us watching 45 minutes, but imagine being at a four hour taping and this comes out. Well, you've seen Anderson. Here's the problem with these tapings: you've seen Anderson at this point. This is your fourth time, and then right. not only have you seen him four times, and I I don't know if I'm getting that exactly right, but then right it's after his match, it's four squats matches. Yeah, well, and then there's one with Tracy. Yeah. Um, at the end of it, which we cover next week. But then right after that, you get another promo from him. And to me, this promo wasn't bad. It's just meat and potatoes, and he doesn't have the promo ability at this point that his father does. So it is what it is. It's not horrible, but I don't know. You just, again, th- these these tapings, man, and we love Smoky Mountain, but this had to be rough for the fans sitting in the audience. I mean, yeah. I, I I, I would have just rather not have gone to a tape, and even though you kind of get to see everything in advance, but, I'd but Harper had it home. Harper had a good point earlier. I mean, that's us now. Back then, what else were you going to go do? Right. I, I, I what else are you going to go fucking I'm, do? I'm 19 years old at this point. I'm not sitting through. That. Shit, we would. Yeah, have but you were 19 the- years old in New Orleans. They were in bumfuck Thank Kentucky. You. They don't have cable. No. They don't, there's no internet. I mean, what else are you going to go fucking do? I guess you got a point there. I mean, shit. Uh, what's her name? Tammy doesn't get off at the at the Dairy Queen until 1130, so we might as well just stay here until she gets off and we can all pull a train on her. Well, Tammy's got clothes tonight. There you wow. go. That's it. Yeah. What's yeah. that place called? Stickies? What? Stickies. <laughs> okay. 
that big fucking truck stop they have. Stuckies? Yeah, Stuckies. Stuckies. Well, Terrence got to work at the Stuckies later on. When she gets off, we just run a train on her. <laughs> you know, she's a whore. She don't say no to anything. <laughs> okay. We'll keep going. We we go next. We're getting ready to hit hit this uh, point in the show. It's a very very long segment. There's a promo. Whoa, whoa, well, hold on. So you're not going to talk. So you're not going to do Oli and Bryant's promo. Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean it, it was meat and potatoes. Did you have something from it? Have we made the, this joke yet? Because I just wondered if Oli needed to get back to Best Buy because his break was almost over. <laughs> I was oh, thinking the his, same uh, thing. You think he would have changed his fucking shirt? <laughs> Let's 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 see. There, I mean, you can see him right here uh, if you're watching on Patreon. Yeah, he's got the blue shirt, the khakis. Yeah. Let's hurry. Let's hurry it up, Jr. I got to get back. We got a big sale on TVs today. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm with you on that. He definitely looks like he's going to. He's, he's the old cranky buy. guy, like at Home Depot, that used to have a career, but now he just does this job for the insurance, and he's just pissed off at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, here's, here's here's what's wrong with your generation, pal. Has anybody ever been told, here's what's wrong with your generation? And went, you know what? You're right. I'm going to get to work on that, sir. Here's what's wrong with you people. We need to be mindful that we don't do that as well. If you think, oh, I'm, man, I'm good with the kids. The only thing the kids have done, the kids have done two things. Like, first of all, the kids are like the technology leaders and all that. I get that. Kids have ruined two things wrestling and rock and roll. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know about the rock and roll, but I know about the wrestling. So, yeah, there you go. All right, we'll keep going. There's a promo vignette. It's Jim Ross. He throws us to a segment where Cornette is training for his tag match where he'll be tagging with Bruiser Bedlam versus Dirty White Boy and Ron Wright. We've kind of talked about that already. Not this show, but that match that's going to happen. Um, Very long segment. Cornette is talking about training and eating right while Bedlam brings him a triple cheeseburger to the training session. Uh, but Bedlam is the one who actually eats the burger. Um, yeah. Corny is cutting He's the He's chowing down, man. I know. Yeah, he Corny. Just, he just rips the bag open. He can't even stick his yeah. hand there and grab it. He just rips it open. Um, he drinks that drink Corny. like he's been a, walking across the desert, too. Cornette says he's bringing X-Lax, Preparation H, and Milk of Magnesia, and Geritol to the ring for their match with Ron Wright. And then... Uh, so Corny was supposed to be training, but the only thing he's doing during this six minutes of this promo is running his mouth. There was no working out, uh, which I guess is perfect for him. So, uh, Doc, any other thoughts? This was kind of long, but I, I tried to summarize it. Bedlam eating popped me because he, he was over there eating like he was hungry. And then when he got the drink and he was like, this straw is not delivering it fast enough and ripped it off and threw it down. Once again... It would be easy to categorize this as goofy and dumb. This is part of the charm of territory wrestling for me. So, dude, he devoured that burger. In Bro, he's, look at him! Just that poor burger is getting destroyed. Yum 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 yum. Exactly. Triple cheese, motherfucker. <laughs> all right. So after all that, anything else, Doc? Before we keep going. Well, I did point out he didn't do any training, but you know we'll we'll let that slide since he's the boss. Exactly. So then, like right after that, they go to a, a promo, and I will play this one. It's a, it's a, not that long, but uh, Ron Wright's got a nice stylish shirt on. <laughs> Jeez, you, you think you think he could uh, pick out the right fishing lure for your needs with that <laughs> shirt on? I bet he's let's, got a Debco pole. Let's, let's play the promo. We'll talk about it on the other side. Here's Dirty White Boy and Ron Wright responding to Corny's training session. It is about Thanksgiving Thunder and this tag team match. I know you two gentlemen are dead serious. Dead serious is exactly right. You know, it looks like Cornette, he's not taking this serious. If that's called training, you know, I'm a worse woman. But you see, that's fine and dandy because what's going to take place Thanksgiving Thunder is I'm going to take Bruiser Bedlam and I'm going to beat that big ugly head until he's unconscious. And then, Jim Cornette, that's going to leave you to this man right here, Mr. Ron Wright. Because you see, Jim, you go around, you, you're you devious and you're mean and you're backstabbing. <laughs> Well, that ain't nothing, baby, because when you want to start talking about mean, nasty, backstabbing, who wrote the rule books, this man right here, 
If you don't believe me, you ask anybody in professional wrestling who wrote the rule books on breaking the rules, they'll say the legendary Mr. Ron Wright. That's right. Let me tell you something, Cornette. I've got a lot off of my mind because I've laid for weeks thinking up and scheming with my wicked mind that I've had all of my life just exactly what I'm going to do to you. And let me tell you something, I'm so happy today because I've got it all worked out and figured in a little plan. And let me tell you something, geek, I remember the whipping you gave me with the belt, but you think that whipping was bad? You wait till Ron Wright gets done laying the East Tennessee dog whooping on you that you're going to get the night of the Thanksgiving Thunder, brother. I can't wait to get down there and get my tights on and get it on with, brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to happen at Thanksgiving Thunder, and when we come back, that explosive footage involving the Rock and Roll Express and the gangsters is coming up next. Okay, Hopper, comments on Ron Wright in uh, his Zebco poll and his Zebco reel that he's got as he's waiting to go fishing. I, I guarantee it. He drives a Chevy Caprice with a trailer hitch on it. And... <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps that fishing pole in the trunk of the car in case he gets, you, you know, some free it, time. Right. <laughs> so he just has it on him. Doc, his superpower is out again. Yeah, he's flexing his superpower for everybody to see. Oh, Man, geez. I didn't know if we were going down to the wrestling matches or we were getting ready to pass the offering plate. You want to explain what you mean there? Oh, let me tell you something, brother. The Lord has been good to me, brother. Just very... It just felt very Pentecostal up in here. Well, according to Bo James, uh, lots of Ron Wright's influence was from the church, and his uh, promos were that of a preacher. You can hear it right here. I can tell you that. You, but this is, certainly this is can. my wicked mind. He's got that. Uh, I say it all. I said it years ago when we, we first started covering him. He's got that like shrill to his voice that he just knows how to hit that right octave and whatnot. But, it's also got that waver that the uh, kind of that the preachers yeah. have. Yeah, I agree. Why is uh, f- fucking dirty white boy wearing a Gold's Gym fucking sweatshirt on? Maybe he did. The, he fixed uh, the uh, uh, stopped up toilet over there last week and they gave him this shirt. <laughs> That's nice. That's so classy. Maybe they paid him. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. It'd be nice if they did. And he, that's why he's wearing that shirt, picking up a few extra dollars on the side. I tell you what, you know, White Boy is right right there. Ron Wright wrote the rule book on fighting and breaking rules. And then, you know, I know Ron Wright can't go anymore because he's like that old fighter that might not have all the moves. But if he connects you, you know, with one good shot, you're sleeping and seeing stars in the next week. So, like, he, he he's old and he can't go, but she don't let that fool you, man. If he catches you one time, you might have got off a few, but all you got to get is one, and you're out. I don't know. Any other thoughts, Doc? No, I I mean, he's got a plan. Yeah. So they throw us to the footage from last week after we went off air, but as Jr. says, the cameras kept rolling. Now, um. Doc, your your lawn man last week showed up earlier than expected, so Bro, you weren't really just... able to get. <laughs> you weren't able I to hear it in the back. Up. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's break kayfabe for a second. Um, basically, Doc didn't abandon us during the episode. He had a situation going on. It seemed like he got mad, but he just went with it and played the act. Let's just go there. Uh, so Doc disappeared from us. We get off. We get off. We hang up, and Mike's like, "Oh, you're still here, man. Why are you mad?" I'm like, I- I'm not mad, dude. How's it going? <laughs> what's up? What's up, friends? His lawn man interrupted his recording, but he never told us during it. So Harper and I just kind of went with it. We thought he was just <laughs> playing heel. So anyway, long story short, um, Doc didn't give his thoughts on the brawl. So did you want to say anything about the brawl since you really didn't mention and talk about it? Did the only thing I would say, other than it's wild ass, was did it did it seem like um, they were making a huge deal of how much blood New Jack was bleeding? But it was, I mean, it, look. He got busted open, no, no lie. But it just didn't. He didn't. He didn't cut, hit a Jericho there. Yeah, I just think that's them just trying to sell it. But after you've that's seen Jericho, 
the problem, I mean, like, Harper probably agrees with this, man. It's like anything. Right. It's like if you, if you in the first match, if, it's like if somebody in the first match goes out there and does 50 million things and then, you know, like, how a guy's supposed to follow and or, 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 yeah. or you've seen it. So in the case of, I know JR's trying to sell the blood and less is too, but in the case of Smoky Mountain, man, dude, it was two months ago, three months ago, that four months ago, actually, that we saw all this blood at Night of Legends um, three months ago. But still, man, that was one of the greatest juice jobs you've seen uh, from Jericho. So, yeah, it, it's not a lot of blood compared to that. But, I mean, he, he was bleeding. And it is too, man. I mean, New Jack's, New Jack's an African-American. You're not going to see the blood as well as you're going to see it on Chris Jericho's, Jericho's pink head and blonde Come on. Hair. True. It's true. That adds to it. <laughs> what? You can be mad at me because I'm telling the truth? Well, I just get tired of the race car, dude. Yeah. Nobody's playing a race car. We're just saying how you can see blood more on Jericho's pink head and blonde hair than you can on New Jack's That's bald, nice. black head. It's the way you say pink. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting that from Look at New that. Jack. He's, he's bleeding. But, I mean, and here's the thing. Like, I give JR credit because he sold it well last week when he said, you know, we're, we're going to keep the cameras rolling. We're going to keep things going. And they did. But it's not like anything new happened. They just kept brawling in this episode. Right. And the bell keeps like, ringing. Right. I used to wonder so, as a kid, like, what? Are they going to, like, all of a sudden just stop after the third time of fucking ringing a bell? Right. Nothing. I mean, literally nothing Nothing else happens. They just keep ringing a bell and they keep brawling. And I don't know. JJ it. rang the bell not too long ago and got everybody to stop. <laughs> that was a different story, though, what JJ did on NWA. But, yeah. All right, um, Doc. Any other any other thoughts here, man? Any anything you want to add? Because uh, again, it's it's just a pull apart, and they're just brawling. Yeah, I mean, it's it's they are they're serious about this though. These team, there is hatred fueling this. Yeah, they're do they're really pushing it. They're really tra- yeah. They're 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 uh, they're really trying to get this shit over. Yeah. Um. Any thoughts for me, the one of you, on the Rock and Roll's promo at the end? I thought it was meat and potatoes, and they I said just, they're going <laughs> to the middle ghetto street fight, and that's it. Um, I thought that Gibson looked great in his America shirt and fanny and fanny pack. Look at that shit! Look at Jesus that! Jesus Christ! It was like you're damn right. <laughs> I vote for Bob Dole. It was a good American. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> The best part about that fanny pack, like to be honest, is he's got the fanny pack over the shirt instead of the shirt. Yeah, like the shirt That's, is tucked. That into is the fanny loud pack. and proud, is what that is. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, America, America. And then America. I thought that Morton pulled a bootios and said he didn't care about going to jail. Uh, yeah, he did, but yeah, I thought it was still meat and potatoes. Though, would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll here to stay. We ain't here to play. We're gonna get you ghetto street fight. Blah blah blah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Doc, I guess it's time for uh, you and Harper to rate the episode. What are you rating it, Doc? Wait, wait. Why won't you rate them? No, oh, we already talked about that last couple of weeks. If you don't remember, Why? I can't help you. What are you rating it, Doc? Um. Well, I was waiting for you to rate them first, so I need to think about this for a second. Maybe Harper should go first. I told you I let the people rate it. Yeah. What have they been rating them? You haven't come back with any feedback. Where's your Where's your PowerPoint charts to show deck to show me the the readouts? I spend a lot of time editing and producing this show. That's that's whatever. What so what, what he just told to you people is don't send him your ratings because right. he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, that's not Poor true. You. That's what you just said. Right. That's exactly. A lot, people, a lot of people rate it on um on the Facebook group. But I mean, you're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry. Let me answer. Well, somebody rated it a um, 8.0. Somebody rated a 8.5. I've seen 7.5s. What are you asking me here? I'm giving you a bunch of people's ratings. Well, so you that's... want to catalog every single rating? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I need it averaged. And, and I need you. Right. You get on social media and you handle that. I'm delegating that to you. Thank you very much. What's your rating? I, I'm not going to take that delegation. And I'm going to say. Great episode, eight point six. Hopper, what about you? Give it an eight point two. All right, I'll rate it an eight point five. There you go. Yeah. Um, 
the cat it's, saved it. Dude. Oh, cat. I mean, think about cat. it, though. Think about this. That's a pretty strong episode to be this deep into the taping. Yeah. Because usually we're going the other way here. Yeah. I'm curious to see what happens with this cat. I want to. <laughs> um, uh, tell you what, we're gonna we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's see what. That's uh, nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's go to make sure you're you become a patron at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. It is a great way to support this show on an ongoing basis. Get access to the video review versions of these that we do each and every week. Uh, I post these. Uh, I actually post the video versions a couple of days before the audio. So if you want to see what we're talking about as we talk about it, you can get the video versions at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Plus, don't forget, there's a ton of other stuff. Doc and I recently did an AWA episode. We've done some ECW episodes. We did a Memphis episode recently. All is up on Patreon along with the world-class shows at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Doc, uh, we need to... Um, oh, government cheese. I, I don't... I'm giving it to the pussycat. Yeah, it's got to be the cat, man. Yeah, got to no. be the cat, right, Doc? No, I'm giving it to cactus for uttering the pussy line. That's nice. Well, that's kind of giving it to the pussy, too. What? Cat. I like to give it to, giving it to the pussy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Vagina. Cool. <laughs> it's nice, Hopper. Can you grow the fuck up, please? <laughs> <laughs> what are you asking him to do over there? Oh, man. All right. So, uh, so to recap, Hopper, you're giving it to the cat. Yes. Okay. And I'm giving it to the cat. But Doc's giving it to Cactus for his pussy line. Yeah. Okay, before we get out of here, Doc, let me ask you a question. Do we want to hear the pussy line again? Because I can go back to it real quick. No, these people can go fetch that for themselves. Oh, Jesus Christ. And y You hear Lord Babyface over there? These people can go fetch that for themselves. We got yeah. another show to do, and let me tell you something. It's not, we're not, look, we were blessed this week. But next week, which is in about five minutes. Oh, ugh. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, man got to put on our working boots in the next few minutes this is just a this is easy we can come in here and talk about kitty cats and all kinds of stuff next we got to work yeah so uh real quick uh before we go do next week check out the wrestling podcast about nothing with roh's brian malonis and mike crockett every single monday they're doing a mix of classic and current stuff also check out our vantage point the retro wrestling podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, the northern version of BTT, slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. Both of those shows come out on Monday, so check them out. They support us, so please support them. And that's all I got. Harper, um, if you want to uh, hit the tagline, you can do so and take us home. Fuck it, bitch. Meow. <laughs>
before we get out of here, I want to say thank you to all of our patrons out there. We appreciate your patronage, and hopefully you enjoy all of our patron shows, whether it's pre-shows, whether it's world-class shows, whether it's the extra bonus shows as far as Patreon shows go, like the ECW one we did and the AWA one we did. Uh, we got a couple of more that we're going to be getting recorded. It's just a matter of getting them scheduled. But thank you if you're a patron. We really appreciate it. And don't forget... When you jump up to the $5 tier, you're going to be in that tier where you'll get those AWA and ECW extra shows we did, along with the Jim Crocker Promotions pay-per-views with the Bunkhouse Stampede coming up in the next couple weeks. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, we've already had the first one, but that's neither here nor there. I want to also give a special shout-out to all the Hall of Fame patrons out there. Uh, we had a couple of new ones recently, but to name all of them, we got Coach Joey Case. I'm sorry, Coach Joey Chase, a.k.a. Willie Chase, Steve Mall, Ron Brown, Kenny Byers, Dorf, Glenn Abbott, at GA Russell Nutt on Twitter, Bobby Murray, Marlon Mueller, who is at Half Pints Point on Twitter, Josh Warren, Everett Starr, Mike Childry, Kyle Riley, and disrespectfully classy Marky e. Blassie, Craig Norman, Johnny on Patreon, the great John Dean, Josh Dunn, Ryan in Auburn, good old Justin, Robert Smith, Joseph Ice, Tim Marecci, Adam Price, Brian Evans, Mark Wilson, Armando Martinez, David Jordan, Jesse Jacob, Josh Fields, Chris Myers, Gerald Green, Mitchell Johnson, Mike Pru, Will Parker, Jeremy Bryant, Classy Alex, Slider 91 US, excuse me, David DeVries, Frog Zeppelin, SV Pageant, Bill Salsa, Big Rich, at Spy Boy Sports Cap, R.E. Miller 39, Dustin Roberts, Jay Shiny, Ruben Espinosa, Merciless Jones, Jesse Lucas, Chris Browning, Justin underscore Andretti, Coleman 22, Marty Howell, and T Hog 94. Thanks for being Hall of Fame patrons. Uh, did I get God Bold Unreal? I don't want no heat, brother. So, anyway, thank you uh, for being Hall of Fame patrons. We appreciate it. Your patronage, again, means a lot. And then check out the Bottom Line Wrestling cast with Mike Pru and his buddy JV as they break down the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin month by month on a weekly basis. They are, I believe, in 1998. But if you want to go back, check out some of their episodes from 1996 and 97 on Austin. Or, again, just dive in where they are currently at. New episodes come out every Wednesday morning. They're available on most platforms, including iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, and Google Play. You can find them on Twitter, also at Bottom Line Cast. Thank you, everyone, for being patrons. Thank you to all the Hall of Fame patrons out there. We appreciate it. Thank you for... I don't know, man. I'm just being honest here. Thank you for supporting this show because it really does mean a lot each and every, uh, you know, we put out two shows a week consistently for the free shows. And I'm just grateful that you all out there appreciate that and that our two shows come out every single week on time, no delays. And I'm thankful to all of you who support this show and um, our patrons on Patreon. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT if you're not a patron. So please sign up. Consider it. For two bucks a month, you get a lot. Um, for five bucks a month, you even get more. And, you know, there are other tiers, but that's your two basic tiers. So thank you very much. And um, that's all I got, as Hopper always says when we get out of here. Book it, bitch. <laughs>